wanna find a lover I only got one love And it's ice cream Yeah What's going on guys? I'm in Wales, actually, and I have to say it was so nice sleeping in a bed for the first time in ages last night. It was four nights on the road in the car and then one night on the airplane and like, I slept like a baby last night. And I'm here in Cardiff for now and uh, I've got some shopping to do. So honestly, I'm sick of my Sony camera. It seems to be picking up sensor spots like crazy, it has a sensor scratch, and all this happens even though I never, ever changed the lens on it. And then when I got to the airport yesterday, the lens stopped zooming and stopped focusing. So I'm giving up on it, and I'm going to buy something new. Jessup's didn't have it, but Camera Center here did. I changed up. I'm now going to be shooting the vlog on the Canon SL2. Mostly just because I wanted to be like Thomas Heaton, but also because I just find that with my 5D Mark IV, the time-lapse mode has been such a game-changer, and I just like the crispness and color and contrast that I'm getting way better out of my Canon gear than I am out of the Sony. So, I'll be shooting the rest of the video, I hope, today on the SL2. I'm gonna try to get it kitted up on my gimbal. It's a tiny, tiny, tiny little DSLR, so I think that's an advantage, and the reason I went with this one. tiny this thing is. Comparison, 200D, this is the Sony A6300. I think the Canon might be smaller. It's definitely lighter. That's crazy. I actually didn't expect it to be this small. When everybody says you gotta go mirrorless for a size, this is lighter and smaller. Didn't expect that actually. Got the lens on now and it's still lighter. Who'd have thought? And it looks like the gimbal holds it just fine. Look at that. New setup. Now made it to Pembroke. I'm now vlogging on the 200D. It had to charge up the battery um, and it feels fantastic actually. It feels no heavier than the other gear. It doesn't feel out of balance. It just, it feels really good. Tell me how you think it looks. Does it look better than the Sony did? Um, as I mentioned, I'm in Pembroke now. This is gonna be my base for the next three days as I explore and shoot some photography here in Southern Wales. Um, kind of gloomy skies right now, but we're gonna go out and try to find a location to shoot. Oh, and did I mention they gave me a Mercedes-Benz C350 to rent when I got to sixth? No idea why I got an upgrade, but I'm stoked about it. Let's drive. So I've come to a place called Freshwater West. I really don't have any idea what I'm doing here, or what I'm looking for, or what there is to shoot, just that I wanna take some pictures. When I realized I had three days free that I could come to Wales, I asked on Twitter where I should go, and everybody said either Pembrokeshire or Snowdonia. And originally I'd planned on trying to shoot both, but I looked at the weather a couple days ago and it basically said that it was gonna be stormy and rainy up in Snowdonia, and not in a good way, kind of in an overcast way like this. The weather here was supposed to be partly cloudy, although this is overcast, but the beauty of the sea, the beauty of shooting seascapes, is that if you can find cool foregrounds, it doesn't really matter if the sky goes off. Yeah, it's better if the sky goes off, but you can always make it work, you can always make it look a little bit fine arty. So, I've been dying to shoot some seascapes recently, I love shooting seascapes, and that's what's gonna happen here. So I made it down to the beach and it is windy and it is cold, but it's gonna be spectacular, I think, even without a sky. You've got this beach that's huge and really rocky and kind of interesting, but I'm giving up on the beach before I even check it out because as soon as I walk down here, 
my eye was drawn over to these rocks over here. With this wild weather with these winds, I think these rocks will make for amazing foreground subjects. And if you know my work, I'm all about the foreground of an image. So this is it. This is amazing. I think the tide's working its way in right now. So it might get better and better as the light comes down. And even if I don't get sunset, even if I don't get light, I think this is gonna be just a rad place to shoot. So I've scouted around a little bit and I think that this is the spot I wanna shoot. The waves are crashing here pretty hard which gives that dramatic foreground. But you also have like tide pools of calm water here. And I think it might be cool to give that contrast of the calm and then the wild seas in the same image if I can. I also like this spot because there's lots of compositions, a lot of different spots to shoot. I can go this way and I've got this beautiful dark rock sticking out of the water with a cool foreground full of these purplish rocks. These purplish rocks are gonna make a fantastic contrast to the gray sky. And then I've also got this back across this way with the beach in the background. It's all a little bit gray, it's all a little bit dreary, but I think it's gonna work. I have faith in this. the tides came crushing in and I had the bail on that location because it was really cool and I think I did get one cool photo from there but the tides just were pushing in and it's kind of flat and there's nowhere to escape to so I would have gotten like destroyed the gear could have got destroyed so I'm gonna try this place now because at least I can run up the beach here and try to escape if the tides or a wave comes in for the most random tripod setup. This is right up there with some of the best I've ever done. This one's way up here. I'm gonna flip the camera around so you guys can see. That's a pretty good balancing act. But the lesson of this though is the best place for your photo isn't always the best place for you to set up your tripod. Sometimes you gotta get a little bit creative. Sometimes you gotta get a little bit crazy. The reason I'm up here is like five-fold. One, I wanted to stay dry, so I'm way up high above the waves. And two, there's these beautiful rocks in the foreground here that work as a great anchor, and I wanted to get right on top of them. And the only way to do that and stay dry was to get way up top here. I've knocked out an image I love. I'm. Uh, I'm not going to be able to show you the setup because I can't get there with the vlogging camera, but it's 30 seconds ISO 200 and F11 or something like that. I've got a six stop ND on and a three stop soft grad ND. And even if I'm not getting beautiful light, the stormy weather in the background is so dramatic that I'm just loving it. The tides came in so, so fast here that I'm now literally way on the back. There's no more beach anymore. It's raining a little bit and it's gray. And I think a lot of people might call this weather miserable, but for me, I'm absolutely loving it because it's dramatic and the sea is just acting up, misbehaving. And when a sea misbehaves, you get really, really cool seascapes. Yeah, I would love to have a sky, but I, I'm really stoked with how this is all turning out. As you can probably tell by the spots all over the lens, the rains have come in. So I'm gonna hike out of here and call this a night, even when there's bad light. And even when it's rainy and miserable, I don't think you'll ever find me happier than shooting seascapes. There's nowhere in the world I would rather take pictures than really, really cool seascapes. Absolutely love the challenge of the sea. Absolutely love the mood of the sea. 
And yeah, just everything about it is brilliant. And I guess that's it for me today. Um, new camera, still getting used to this 200D, but I think it looks good. It feels good, it's easy to use. And tomorrow I'm back here in Wales, hopefully with some better lights. If I can make it across this beach without getting swept to sea. Wow, I did not expect the tides to rise so quick. Anyways guys, I'm out of here. I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.